Hey guys, we are back again for another edition of the Truman Lake Fishing Intel Expert Roundtable. It is October 2022. We've got a great crew of guys tonight. Darren Langford, Richard Bowling, Jordan Lear, Dylan Stocking, and Hunter Bowling. They've been fishing the lake like crazy and have a lot of good updates for you. We're going to get into crappie bass, catfish, all the good stuff. Talk about some of the, the greater fishing topics that are going on uh, nationwide with some some scandalous happenings in the walleye world and <clears throat> all kinds of cool stuff before we get into that as we always like to do at the beginning of these videos i want to say thank you to a couple of folks that helped make these possible first foremost nini's italian steakhouse and catering uh they went all out for us tonight we had steaks and green beans and potatoes it was really awesome nini's is located down in warsaw missouri they have uh, a deal for members where if you go in there and you are a member of the website, you show them your membership and get a free appetizer. Um, their catering is really great. They do events within several hours all around the Truman Lake area as far up as Kansas City. Uh, lots of great options, and uh, they can get you hooked up there. Um, so be sure to call her, Gina, uh, down at Nini's, and uh, she'll be able to get you a bid on whatever it is, whether it's holiday party, company party, whatever. Um, she can get you hooked up. So be sure to check out Nini's Italian Steakhouse and Catering. And then we also want to thank Angler's Port Marine as well, located on 7 Highway between Clinton and Warsaw, Missouri. Your go-to dealership for Phoenix, Camus, and Low Boat Lines. They just announced here in the last two months, if you haven't heard already, they are doing a uh, Angler's Port payout to in the um, Anglers in Action tournament series if you are running a phoenix boat i believe that's two years or newer purchased from anglers port marine they're going to match the first place prize if you win one of their boats uh so it's already ten thousand dollar prize they're going to kick in an extra ten thousand dollars for you and then if you're part of the phoenix first flight program that's another i think seven thousand dollars so if you win an anglers in action event you're looking at a twenty seven thousand dollar payout so Really cool that Anglers Port Marine is uh, doing that and, and chipping in for the anglers to make it worth your while to fish these tournaments. So that's really great. Um, be sure to check them out. Seven Highway. They're all over our website. Banner ads. You can click that and it'll take you right to their website. But with that, we are mid-October. The fishing has been getting better and better. Water temperature is dropping lake conditions it's been kind of turning over but that seems to be kind of is that kind of wrapping up are you guys seeing that around the lake or are you still seeing some evidence of the turnover going on in the upper ends yeah. it was kind of scummy on the palmy last week mid palmy still but um what are we seeing on water temperature are we we're, we haven't touched 50 yet have we uh 62 63 so 60s. Low 60s, lower ends probably a little bit behind that. They're probably still mid 60s um, from what we've been hearing. Jordan, what have you been seeing down the lower end? Yeah, 66 to 68. Okay, yeah. So let's get into some actual fishing, what it's been like, where we're heading, what you need to be focusing on here over the coming month of October and into November. Uh, Richard, you've been out every every day. Um, how, how are things changing? What's the pattern been like for you recently? How do you foresee it changing or getting better? All that. Uh, I don't think it's going to get better. <clears throat> it's good right now. We've been, even, even before we left and went to the nationals two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever, I was catching these fish on channel ledges, mm -hmm. which they shouldn't be there this time of year. They should be way up in these ditches like I preach all the time. They're not there. They're in that deeper water right on the drop-offs and up on it just a little bit, or even out in the channel. Today we caught every fish in the middle of the channel way up to Grant. Really? Um, they're going to sit there for a little while longer, and the water's going to cool down a little more, and they're going to pile into these creeks. But these fish that's, that I'm fishing now, they're going to be there for another two or three weeks probably. Really? So <clears throat> that's really interesting because it was just last week when uh, I know we did a fishing report where you didn't catch fish in the channel were you really looking for them though in the channel that day no i was looking on the ledges of okay. it okay you know on the ledges of it up in the timber and a lot of fish on them timber i mean you can have a you know just a straight up tree and there'll be six eight nine fish just right in a row and if yeah. you fish it right you can catch five or six of them fish and <clears throat> now then with the wind today i got out in the channel and roamed around not a tree around and caught 
Well, they cut 45 crappie out there, or we did. Yeah. All good keepers. All good keepers, yeah. Way up to Grand, you know, up past Otter Creek. Just pick the bluff out of the wind, and pretty good. Yeah. Um, now, when you say deeper water, what are we talking? Are we talking 20, 25 feet? Are we talking 10 feet? No, 12, <clears throat> 12 foot at uh, 20 foot. Okay. No, the, you know, your heart, you can't always find more water than that up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20 foot's a lot of water up there. The fish are going to be down about 10, 11, 12 feet. And you're going to see one in your live scope. Where you're trying to catch it, there's going to be one past it. Yeah. There's that many fish out in the channel right now. Is the, uh, and it's still on minnows, is that still the ticket? You can catch them on a jig, but man, it's hard to beat a little old dead minnow. Yeah. And I'm, I'm stunning my minnows, killing them, and I don't want that minnow moving at all. I'll put it right in their face, and they're going to eat it. Yeah. Interesting. Uh... Yeah, because I was out on the weekend. I watched Richard fish and keep catching fish. <laughs> I was throwing jigs uh, with some buddies, and we couldn't get them to really even look at a jig. Um, so you got a dead. What I've learned, you got a dead stick it if you're using a minnow or a jig. You got to put it in front of them, not not jig it. Just leave it setting, get their attention, maybe pull it away a little. Mm -hmm. You know, I got that big shield on my live scope, but I don't call it a shield it's my donking machine mm -hmm. they get metal dunk it you mm -hmm. know, and they don't swim you just put it in front of that fish and they eat it yeah yep i've been in the boat with richard a few times where i've had to <laughs> can't I've, dunk him too yeah, much, i've had to donk him a few times <laughs> it doesn't quite do the job you feel like you're torturing the poor little minnow but uh it does work it does work i've used dead minnows for years and people used to laugh at me but they don't get you hung up as much and fish will eat the dead minnow small fish will eat it big fish will eat it mm -hmm. so. I don't come on. Yeah. Hunter, you were fishing the Truman Lake Tournament Series this past weekend, which is not like a giant thing of boats by any means, but it's like the who's who of Truman Lake. And uh, that's a jig only yeah. tournament. Uh, well, tell me a little bit about your experience because you uh, did you practice a little bit ahead of the. I practiced three days that week before. Okay. And 